some breaking news and it looks like, Andrew, we're heading to a by-election in the federal parliament. With the member for Eden Monero, Mike Kelly, telling me he will consider whether to retire this week. A lot of uh, tough times through that. So. I want to thank Mike Kelly firstly, who has been such a passionate and tireless local member for Eden Monero. The polling showed that I could win, but sometimes in this game you let ego get in the way of good decisions. He says, Michael, please do not contact me. Your lack of public enthusiasm or support for my candidacy went a long way to my final decision. To feel threatened by me clearly shows you have failed your team and failed mm. as a leader. You will never be acknowledged by me as our leader. You aren't. You never will be. You aren't. You never will be. Do you stand by Shows that mobile reception working yeah. <laughs> Good work. Good work. There was a bit of a distraction there. If a week is a long time in politics, try less than 24 hours. I want to apologise for the confusion and anyone who's been upset. Mr Constance admitting this foul-mouthed attack from the Deputy Premier was a key reason. Absolutely, it's disappointing. National fighting national, Liberal fighting Liberal, National fighting Liberal and all of them fighting each other. Are you concerned this Nationals infighting occurring now will affect the government's chances in Eden Monero? No and no. Here we go. <laughs> Dr Fiona Copwes, who stood for us at the last federal election. I'm honoured to have been selected by the members of the Liberal Party. Campaigning in the age of coronavirus. I won't shake your hand. No, that's okay. <laughs> Social distancing means more pavement pounding than usual. Getting out and about and meeting people, but on a on a one on one basis. Can everyone get off the grass, please. Sure, let's just move back from there. Hey guys, I've just reseated that. Please, off the thing. All good. That's all good. Thanks. I've had two telephone town halls so far. One with the PM. We actually ring people across the electorate. Hi, Diana. How are you? Good to see you. Pleased to meet you. What's your name? Megan. Hi. Lovely to meet you. Not small visits. <laughs> <laughs> Like thousands of others, Fiona Copvoy's property wasn't spared by the black summer bushfires. We stayed and defended and we were able to save our home. Many in the electorate of Eden Monero weren't so lucky. How are you? I'm only shaking your hand if you give more funding to our RFS. For some, that anger is still there. Come on down, Scotty. Come and nice, see, here, see yeah. what we've been through. A lack of communication and respect for local communities from this federal government. He and his wife sleep at a friend's house. Phone lines are still cut off. There is asbestos here. And if you think our local community shouldn't still be waiting for bushfire relief five months later, use your vote. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good to see you. I believe that the climate is changing and I believe that humans are contributing to that change. The area where the hazard reduction hadn't occurred, the fire was just so intense, it's caused so much damage. People are being re-traumatised by having to tell their story over and over again to multiple agencies. I'd have loved the recovery and the clean-up of buildings to be faster. He can't rebuild until all this is gone. Hopefully before next year would be good. It's an electorate that's really hurting. The key thing now is to support those people and to rebuild after the fires. How big a test is this of your leadership? This is a huge opportunity for the people of Eden Monero to send a message to the government about, as well, JobKeeper and all those people who've missed out. If you think the Liberals should keep their promise and not take JobKeeper away from struggling local businesses so soon... Can the Prime Minister confirm he will delay the release of his plan to leave even more Australians behind until after the Eden Monero by-election? Phrasing that question in that way has demonstrated, I think, a great deal of immaturity. Now, I understand the Labor Party can only see things through a political prism, Mr Speaker. Hoping to keep the focus on the fate of the JobKeeper scheme, which is not due to be revealed until July 23. Snapping back JobKeeper will break the back of many small businesses. When you're going through more than $10 billion a month in supports, you don't rush those decisions. 